Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Game to video, we're going to be discussing Threadripper, its performance, release date, and pricing, and also Intel and their response to AMD. That's right, the company have finally broken their silence and have decided to call the epic range of processors glued together desktop parts. No, you can't make this stuff up, can you? Anyway, let's first of all begin with Threadripper and Ryzen 3. So, Obviously, I think most people know this, but Threadripper is going to be the high-end desktop solution from AMD. It's aiming, of course, at taking on the X299 from Intel, and its platform is known as the X399. AMD have decided to grace us with information regarding the pricing, performance, and release date. So first of all, the pricing. Well, it has two parts listed, two SKUs, the 1920X and the 1950X, which have 12 cores, 24 threads and 16 cores, 32 threads respectively, both with a turbo frequency of 4 GHz. The difference here, of course, is pricing. One costs 799, the other being 999. I'm pretty sure you can guess which one's which. As for release date, well, it's going to be early August, so not too long into the distant future, and basically taking part in the kind of same time frame as SIGGRAPH 2017, which, by the way, is around the same time we should see the release of RX Vega. For your information, both chips are reported to feature 32 megabytes of level 3 cache and 64 PCIe lanes. What does that mean? Well, you will be able to run free graphics cards with full times 16 bandwidth. I grant you most GPUs now don't really benefit from that. You don't really get a performance disadvantage, at least, you know, within such a tiny margin of error of just running them times 8, but still, it's nice that that is the case. And also, you get full quad-channel DDR4 memory support as well, so at least in theory, memory bandwidth should not be too much of an issue. So, what about performance? Because ultimately, that's what's probably going to be convincing you to buy a particular CPU, right? Well, Intel have the i9-7900X out, and that's what AMD decided to pit the 1920X against. So, what do we have? Well, we have Cinebench results, which I admit is not always the most uh, reliable across all applications, but it does give you an indication of performance. So, the i9-7900X in their test receives 2167. This, by the way, just to clarify, is CPU testing only, no GPU involved. Meanwhile, AMD, in the same test with a very similar test system, that's Windows 8, uh, is 12 cores versus Intel's 10, and it receives 2,431. Now, I would like to bring one thing to your attention, and I'm not saying AMD's results are wrong, I'm just saying that I happen just randomly to be testing an X299 platform myself. Actually, it's for a review from MSI. They've decided to send over a platform and a couple of different CPUs, as regular viewers know. I'm almost finished the review, um, or almost finished the benchmarking, shall I say, for the review, because I've got a lot of stuff done. But uh, my results actually are slightly different, and I'll pop mine on screen. With my tests, I'm getting around the 2300, 2350 mark. Uh, 2350 is the best I've got with a freshly booted system or around the 2300 mark if I decide to basically run those tests off the other tests, like with other stuff running in the background like Steam and other crap, basically, which is obviously eating up CPU cycles. For those wondering about my tests, I am running at the default clock speed, so it's turboing up to 4.3 GHz. That is with an MSI Gaming ACK, that is a um, an X299 Gaming M7 ACK, that's ACK for those wondering, along with Windows 10 at 64-bit, and 32 GB of DDR4 memory from Crucial running at 2666 megahertz just for your fyi the next processor is the much faster it has to be said 70 sorry 1950x i was just about to say 7050x uh the 1950x scores 3062 points so i'm just going to repeat that 3062 points this, of course, is a 16-core, 32-thread behemoth. It also is running Windows 8 for whatever reason, and a 64-bit OS, unsurprisingly. This CPU is really impressive. Honestly, 
I want to see single thread performance because obviously this this benchmark really does uh, allow multi-thread CPUs to kind of run away with themselves. The thing is, if you're doing multi-thread tasks, I can definitely see the appeal for Threadripper considering the 1950, um, uh, sorry, yeah, the 1950X is the same price as the 7900X. Essentially, you're looking at a thousand bucks for both. And the 1920X is definitely a better value proposition than the i9-7820X. Jeez, there are so many model numbers going through my head right now. So yeah, I can definitely understand people wanting to jump onto Threadripper. Well, I guess the next logical thing, because I've already had a couple of people message me about this actually, so thanks very much to Joe via email as well as uh, Frank as well. Uh, and it might be a couple of others that have popped up by now, but still, I think people are just kind of in awe at this one. I'll, I'll give you the synopsis. So basically, Intel have quite literally called... It, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It, 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 the fact that I'm reading this from an official slide, it just makes me... I, 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 I don't even know how to... I, I, I'll just read it out. Inconsistent performance from four glued together desktop dies i'm sorry but that's that's just fantastic i'm sorry but dude that 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 that's just amazing uh, i i i i just love that i mean inconsistent performance from four glued together desktop dies oh god intel didn't you remember your old like dual core processors from back in the day i'm pretty sure you basically use scotch tape now i just want to clarify something technically speaking from a very, very broad stroke of the brush here, it's fair to say that, yes, Nepal slash Epic is basically repurposed desktop dies, but that's not to say that it's a bad solution. Intel were very quick to point out, however, Zen's major weakness, which is that it has 2 times 128 128-bit FMA implementation, which is essentially architecturally equivalent to Sandy Bridge. So obviously that is worse. That is definitely for tr that is definitely true than let's say Skylake, because Skylake has a AVX five twelve, and also according to Intel, there is going to be a difficulty in optimizing your software because of the fact that it has eight different NUMA domains, just because of the way that the dies operate and work in tandem together. Intel are also very keen to poke at. AMD when it comes to bandwidth. So basically this comes down to the various interconnects of the CPUs and between um, between the different components and as well latency. I'm basically throwing all of this into one the bracket. So for example, you can see that the interconnect is 50 gigabits per second from one to, uh, gigabytes per second, excuse me, which means that one CPU might not have full access to PCIe bandwidth. And they believe, at least in there, their official slides that this is not the case with their architecture and that you can actually get 96 gigabits per se uh, gigabytes per second excuse me so i could keep going through this because quite frankly there are a lot of slides but i'll be here for way too long and i think you get the general gist of where i'm going with it basically speaking this is intel saying oh dear we noticed that we actually really have competition now i i believe personally that intel do have really good products and i'm not criticizing them at all uh, even with the x299 platform for example i don't own it like the one i have is a review sample and this is going back so you know i i'm not gonna keep this thing so i don't have an inherent I don't have a, a bias, and I'll probably get to review Threadripper as well, and I'm sure I'm really going to like it and probably have to send it back too, because that's just kind of the nature of things. But, from a value proposition, AMD are doing really well. However, uh, we'll stick for now with HPC usages. I do believe Intel are not going to lose all of their customers. I, I, I don't care what anyone says, because there are a couple of reasons. One... AMD just have worst solu worse solutions, excuse me, in certain areas. For example, the AVX512. Secondly, if it requires software rewrites or it requires basically any kind of downtime or any doubt at all. So, will it run worse? Will it require us to 
do reorganization or re-engineering of our software, whatever it is. Hell, even if the, the company actually think, mm, what about reliability? What about support? And they're a big organization, they probably will not go with AMD. And this is simply because they don't have to worry about saving a few bucks. For smaller organizations, I feel AMD can definitely make a lot of headroom. So that's just my opinion. You might disagree. And if so, then you're, of course, entirely justified to do so. But with all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video and found it somewhat amusing, slash informative, slash something. I don't know. But I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.